All right, let's take a look at the homework for advanced three. Uh, basically, our task is to debug the uh, the physics code, the rebounding code of the ball off the plank. Now, I figured I'd take this uh, take this chance here and just go over the basic. Uh, methodology that I think I have for debugging stuff. I don't know. I've never actually, you know, learned a step-by-step -step guide on how to debug your shit. I just kind of did it. But if I if I analyze my uh, my modus my modus operandum, I guess it uh, comes down to these five points here mostly. So first point, very, very important, observe an issue. And you might say that's a no-brainer, but it's not really because when you code, you can code up a bunch of shit, but if you don't actually test your shit, you're going to have a bunch of bugs that you never even notice. So testing is obviously super important. Uh, now, once you observe an issue, you generally want to identify, you know, exactly what is going on in that issue. What, what's, what's the problem? What is happening? And then this is the important thing. You want to identify the conditions that trigger the issue. Because if you've got a bug and it just happens randomly and you don't know what the triggers are, you don't have any idea. First of all, you can't uh, reproduce it. And if you can't reproduce it, on demand, it's hard to analyze it. So, uh, identifying the things that trigger the bug is a super important, and it's a, it can be very difficult at times. This can be the hardest part of debugging. Uh, bugs that don't have a clear trigger, very hard to debug. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Now, once you can reliably reproduce the bug, then comes this is this might be actually the meat of the debugging process and that is identifying exactly the mechanism of the failure what process what what sequence of steps in code leads to you having the wrong outcome and there's basically two ways there's two ways to go about this way number one is inspiration you know you look at you look at all the information you've gathered the nature of the issue the condition the uh, conditions that trigger it and uh you you know you obviously you know your own code and you just see ah it's probably this um or maybe you uh you stare at your code for a while and you find a you find a typo or you find some other copy and paste mistake that's in, that's the inspiration mode the other way to identify the mechanism is the bust your ass method and uh, what what that is basically is you go into your debugger and you step through every line of code and you watch all the variables uh, that are contributing to your error to the the final state that you that you don't want and you watch those variables in every step you you look at them and you see what what do I expect this to be what is it actually and you keep doing that until you find uh, the exact point where something that you expected to be value A is actually value B. And there is where your, your code is diverging from what you want it to do. And you might have to do that recursively. So you, once you find a spot where this value should be 12, but it's actually 69, uh, then you say, okay, well, what values contribute to this value? and you go back and you step through again watching those values until you go until you find the base cause now once you found the base cause it's just a it's just a matter of you know fixing that bug obviously uh, and usually that's not actually that difficult it's straightforward if you if you have a decent level of programming skill you should be able to figure out and implement a fix once you've understood the nature of the bug and its mechanism all right so we know We've observed our error, and it looks something like this. It's not pretty, right? It, we can see here, it's getting stuck in the plane, in the line of the, uh, the plank. It looks like it's bouncing back and forth inside there. That's a lot of clues already as to what's going on here. Now the second thing we want to figure out, which would be step three in that thing, is what is the trigger? Because we notice here, it doesn't happen all the time. It's not happening now. Uh, here, I'm moving the plank up. It's not happening. But if I move the plank down... Ah, we see that... 
We get some big clues there. So I move the plank down here. Nah, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Here we go. It happened again. Now it's stuck inside there. If I keep moving the plank, it gets out. So we've got some huge clues here. We can reproduce the air fairly um, consistently by moving the plank down during collision. And at this point, either you have a good idea of what the problem is, or you don't, and you're gonna have to do your, you're gonna have to bust your ass. But uh, I don't want to bust my ass. I want to show that on screen because that's going to take too long. And I value my time and your time, but mostly my time. So. I mean, I already know the uh, the problem. Obviously, I knew it before I wrote the code. I designed the code with the problem in mind for the homework. Uh, let's let me diagram it out for you. So, the basic idea is you got your ball, you got your plank, your ball moves. Next frame, you detect a uh, collision here, and you adjust the velocity, and then the ball moves out. Next frame, no collision. It keeps moving this direction. Fairly simple. Well. What happens, you got your ball, your ball moves into here, next frame, you detect your collision, you adjust your velocity, your ball is now moving in this direction. But, simultaneously, another thing happens. Your plank also moves down by, you know, a number of pixels. So now, while you should have had enough velocity because you came in with the same velocity as you're coming out so normally you should be able to escape but because the plank moved now when you step your ball it's still inside of the plank and what happens well you're going to detect another collision now aren't you you're going to detect a collision here your velocity is going in this direction you detect your collision now you are going to bounce up and you're going to detect another collision you're going to bounce the side you're going to bounce up like this, bam, 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 bam. You're gonna ricochet inside of this line here. Because remember, all our collision does is it reflects the current velocity in the uh, in the plane of the plank. So if we're if our velocity is leaving and we detect a collision, it's gonna reflect it so that's going back into the plank. And then when it's going in, it's gonna reflect it so it's going out. And that's why you get that ball stuck in your plank. And that's why it only happens when you're moving down, because that small adjustment is enough to throw you off so that you can't escape with your original uh, entering velocity. Well, how do we solve this problem? Well, the problem is that we are triggering rebounds uh, even though our velocity is leaving the plank. We only want to trigger rebound when the velocity is entering the plank. So, really, we want to detect whether we're traveling towards the plank or traveling away from the plank. And we only want to detect collision when we're traveling towards. Now, there's basically two ways that you could solve this. There's the, uh, the quick and dirty way, and there is the general um, robust solution. Now, the quick and dirty way is to realize that uh, all of our balls, they all have a fixed trajectory, generally going up. So the collision with the plank, when you collide, you're generally going to have a positive y. Positive y, right? Remember, we're working in math coordinates now, so y is up. Uh, and after you collide, you're generally going to have a negative y. So you can just inspect the sign of y, and you use that to determine whether you should be detecting collision or not. That's the quick and dirty way, but obviously it won't work for all situations. You change the orientation, you're coming at it from the side or from the top, and this solution won't work. So, I mean, if you use this solution, that's fine. You know what? Because I didn't, uh, I didn't specify any conditions, and sometimes a quick and dirty solution is the best way to get the job done. Time is money, but because I'm a professional and uh, I'm here to teach you, to give you the knowledge, I'm gonna give you a solution that is general and that works for all situations. Well, I mean, most situations, not just specific ones. So, what we wanna do is we wanna ch detect whether or not one object is approaching uh, another one or the plane. So what we wanna do is we wanna get a vector 
that's pointing out of this surface here. We call that a normal. Uh, the surface normal. It's not really a surface, it's a line, but you get the idea. Uh, and what we do is we compare that with the velocity. And if they're going in opposite directions, that means we're approaching. And if the velocity is going in the same general direction as this guy, then we are leaving. So how do we do that? Well, we know that with the dot product, let's take these two, let's take these two vectors here. Let me just move this guy over here. If we dot these two guys together, what sign do you expect the solution to have? Well, they're going, they're not going in the same direction, so this should be a negative. What if we dot these two guys together? Well, they should be positive. I, why did I put a one there? It's not going to be one, but it's going to be negative. This is going to be positive. And uh, if we were going entirely perpendicular to this, we would expect it. So if it was this, this was our vector, we would expect that to be zero. So by inspecting the sign of the dot product between the velocity and the, uh, and the surface normal, we can detect whether we're approaching the wall or whether we are uh, leaving the wall. So now all that's left to do is to find this, uh, this surface normal. So we have a vector that go, we can get a vector that goes in the direction of the wall of the plank very easily. But how do we get the surface normal? Well, one way to get it is to rotate this by pi over two, also known as 90 degrees to plebs. Uh, so that would give us a vector 90 degrees rotated. That's here. And you normalize that and you would get the surface normal. However, and this is actually very easy to calculate, but I haven't taught, in, I haven't, I haven't taught, in, I haven't taught rotation yet. So we're not going to allow ourselves to use the rotation method, even though it would be the easier way to do it. So how could we solve this without rotation well what if we and this is going to go back to our um, our homework for tutorial one remember when i got you to find a perpendicular bisector that goes through some point like this so find a line that bisects another line and goes through a point because if we find this line 90 degrees so this is normal. So if we find the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisector that travels through the center of the circle, then we get a vector from that intersection point to the circle. We normalize that. That's the normal of our uh, surface here pointing towards the ball. Once we got that normal, we do the dot product, and that can allow us to discriminate whether we're approaching or leaving the wall. So this, is, this method is going to be more annoying to do than rotation, but we can do it. All right, so we give some labels to the points. We got P0 and P1. That's for our plank. We got Q, which is our point of intersection. We got R, which is the center of our uh, circle or our ball. Uh, so let's find, the, um, let's find the slope M of our plank, which is going to be P1Y minus P0Y over P1X minus P0X. Rise over run, right? Now the slope of the perpendicular bisector, we'll call that W. And that is going to be equal to, basically, you flip these guys and you negate. So flipping them and negating gives us P0X minus p one x right because you negate and you're going to switch the order of these two and this one is just the same p1y minus p0y so this gives us our slope of this line here so what we could do i mean we could approach this a number of ways um let's just go with y is equal to mx plus b because we've stuck with it so far. So we want to solve for B for this line here, for the plank line, and we want to solve for B for this line here. So for the plank line, B is going to be equal to mx minus y, right? Uh, so B is equal to P1 
P1Y minus P0Y over, well, we don't need to freaking write this out again. We've defined M. So B is equal to M X, which is going to be, we'll just pick one, P0X, P0X minus P0Y. All right. What is P going to be equal to? Well, P is equal to W, and we have one point on this line, which is R. So W, Rx minus Ry. So now we have our slope, we have our intercept, uh, and we want to find the point Q. So let's find where these two guys intersect each other. And we can do that. Y is equal to mx plus b. So we set the y's equal to each other. And we get, you know, mx plus b is equal to wx plus p. Rearranging that, we get mx minus wx is equal to p minus b. And we get x times m minus w. We factor out these x is equal to p minus b. x is equal to p minus b over m minus w. And here we solve for x. Once we have the x, we can plug that bad boy into y is equal to mx plus b. Or we could plug that bad boy into y is equal to wx plus p. Either one, it will give us the same uh, y because it's the y here. It's valid for both lines. And actually, with the beauty of computers, we don't have to substitute in all these expressions into here and simplify all this bullshit. We can just calculate m and w, calculate b and p, and then use them directly in here in a multi-step process to calculate x. And I love that because I hate simplifying mathematical expressions. I always fuck it up and it is the bane of my existence. All right, this is great, but there is one problem. What happens if our plank is completely vertical? Uh, M is going to be something divided by zero. That's going to be infinity. That's going to cause a problem. And likewise, if we're completely horizontal, m will be 0, w will be divided by 0. That also very bad. So, what we want to do is we want to make sure that if we have completely vertical or completely horizontal, uh, we calculate this surface normal just directly because we know that if it's horizontal, then the surface normal is just going to be, well, if the ball is at y is equal to 5, then it's just going to be uh, the x of this line, 5, draw a line from that. So for the cases of perfectly vertical and horizontal, we'll just basically calculate it directly because it's simple. And we'll only use our math bullshit uh, if, it is a, uh, if it is an inclined line, if it has some kind of angle to it. So we'll calculate constant auto uh, dy is equal to Planck points second y minus Planck points first y, and we'll do the same for dx. That's just the delta x, the change in x. So we'll go ahead and create this uh, Planck normal variable. We won't set it anything at the time being. And now we have our cases for, uh, what is this? dy is equal to zero. This is a horizontal line. This is a vertical line. And this is just a general oblique line. So uh, if it's horizontal or vertical, we can just uh, set the Planck normal directly. So if it's a horizontal line, the normal is going to be pointing directly up or directly down. So uh, it's not going to have any x component. Now the y component is going to be positive if the ball is above the horizontal line. It's going to be negative if the ball is below the, the horizontal line. So what we can do is if ball dot get position dot y is greater than uh, the Planck y, since dy is equal to 0, uh, point 0.1 and point 0.2 have the same y, so we can go Planck points dot first dot y. So if it's greater than, we want this one to be a 1. 
But if it's less than, we want it to be a negative one. And if it's exactly the same, it's going to be a negative one. That's fine. That, my friends, is completely fine. We actually see here that we have a problem that if the uh, the center of the the ball is directly on the line, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have some weirdness happening. But that's fine because we should never have that case. The ball should never penetrate that deep. Uh, if it is, that means our physics time step is too long. So we do the same idea for a completely vertical line, and that should look something like this. And here we do the the general case not horizontal or vertical, oblique. So, what do we want to calculate here? Well, we want to calculate M, and we want to calculate W. So we've already calculated uh, the rise, which is dy, and the run, which is dx, so we can just use those directly to calculate M and W. Uh, then, we want to calculate B and P, and uh, for P, we need to use the center of the ball, but we're also calling the center of the ball, ball get position here, and we're calling it here. So let's just uh, call it once, we'll cache it. So we'll do, I don't know, const auto, that's not how you spell ball, is it? Ball pause is equal to ball dot get pause. And then we can replace that in the places like that, and then here we do ball pause dot x minus ball pause dot y so now we got our mwbp x is equal to p minus b over m minus w and uh const auto y is equal to m times x plus b and there you go and here our plank normal is going to be let's think here so it's going to be ball pause minus vec2 and it's going to be x, y and we want so that's the vector going from the intersection point to the center of the ball and then we want to get normalized and there you go that should, I mean we could just call normalize I think that would be fine uh, it's a temporary that's coming out anyways so it doesn't matter uh, so here we have the plank normal so now in either of our cases no matter which case we end up with we're gonna end here with a valid plank normal and what we want to do is we want to test to see whether we're approaching the plank and if so then we will do this test if not we will skip everything because we don't need to so if plank normal you know we don't even have to normalize this because all we're interested in is the sign of the result so the, the magnitude of the result doesn't matter so we don't need to do this the only the only annoying part of this is now it's not a true normal right because a normal has to be normalized uh, but we're gonna ignore that we're still gonna call it the plank normal uh, so if plank normal dot ball dot get velocity is less than zero it means they're pointing towards each other going in different directions then and only then do we want to do our collision bullshit so this should solve the problem although I mean, if we're going to be realistic, it probably shouldn't, because there's always going to be at least one fuck up. But let's try it out. Alright, so now we are getting absolutely no collision, which is probably worse than what we had before, if we're going to be honest with ourselves here. Alright, I've, I've stared down the code and I've realized my mistake. So y is equal to mx plus b. If you solve for b, you should be subtracting mx from y, but here we're subtracting y from mx. That's, that's the wrong way around. You don't do that, Chili. So what if we did it like this? How do you like me now? Can... Can we smash? Yes. And... No matter how deep we roll into this mother, we're going down, we're going down on her. That's 
that's a weird phrasing. I want to I want to get one over here. Let me hit a grand slam. All right, here we go. Boo yeah. No problem. So, we have solved our problem. We've done it using geometry, using linear equations, using our brain, and uh, it feels good. It feels damn good. So yeah, there's some insight into the uh, the bug crushing mythology, Mi mythology, methodology. There you go. Uh, that I think I use, and uh, a little example of using some math some uh, linear equation bullshits that I introduced in lesson one practically to solve a uh, to solve a problem to solve a game type problem a physics type problem using them together with ve vector mathematics you got your linear equations your algebra you put it with your vectors it's a freaking match made in heaven hope you enjoyed the video let me let me know what you guys think of uh, you know doing this kind of math stuff I could do less of it I could do more of it uh, I'm still gonna do some of it either way but uh, let me know uh, what you guys like and uh, yeah I'll see you again with some more advanced C++